Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, A Random Moment with Pastor David. Today's Thursday, and uh, on Thursdays, we like to tease out a little bit of what's going to come on Sunday through your message. And so today, Pastor, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about prayer, as this is what you'll be teaching on uh, this Sunday out of Mark. And one of the things that you mentioned is that an outward religion without faith is an abomination to God. We saw a picture of that with the temple, the outward <coughs> appearance and the beauty of the temple, but inside it was a marketplace where people were getting ripped off, yeah. full of hypocrisy. Saw that with the fig tree had an outer appearance of, of green leaves and no figs, and so it, it was cursed. And, uh, and so in this, it, Jesus is teaching them les lessons in faith. And the lesson that you'll be covering this week on Sunday is prayer. And Pastor, you know, I don't know if prayer is one of these things that's part of Christianese sometimes where you gotta spend time in your word in prayer, or brother, I'll pray for you. Sometimes I wonder, is there really prayer? And I wanted to ask you the importance of prayer that really demonstrates faith in God and communion with Him in the Christian life. I think that we very often get caught up with postures of prayer. You know, we need to close our eyes, fold our hands, bow our head, perhaps kneel. We get caught up with the physical posture of prayer, but we don't really understand the heart posture of prayer. Because mm -hmm. prayer is really, um, in, boiled down to the most simple way of, of speaking of it, it, is conversation with God. It's fellowship with God. And it's not as if, our God doesn't know the things we have need of. Jesus made it very clear in Matthew chapter 6 that our Father knows the things that we need before we even ask. It's different. What p prayer is, is it's a communion. It's the, it's the heart of man, the soul of man, the spirit of man. It's the entirety of man communicating with, with our Heavenly Father. And so it's, it's a very personal kind of thing. It's very intimate. Uh, it's it, it's one of the most intimate things that we do. As a matter of fact, I remember sharing years ago now that when people think in terms of marriage, they think that the most intimate act that a husband and wife may uh, share together is a physical one, when in fact, that's not true. The most, the most intimate act that a husband and wife share is when they pray together because they're opening their hearts and they're sharing what's the deepest part of their, their spirit, their soul. And there's, there's nothing more revealing than how a person prays, how that person speaks to God, how they, how they address him, the attitude as they do so, and all of that. And so, yeah, we'll be looking at prayer because Jesus, after he um, cleanses the temple and after the fig tree it has been cursed and all, well, it causes... Peter to be surprised, you know, it, because the, the withering of the fig tree was immediate, you know, it, it, it happened in, in, a, in very, a very quick time. And so for him to say, look at the fig tree, you know, Jesus used that and he said, have faith. But he didn't simply say, say have faith, he said, have faith in God. And so I want to point on that, point to that a little bit because people, have faith in their faith mm -hmm. you know there are some television quote-unquote evangelists who who have taught people to have faith in their faith and so you know that's what they say they said anything you desire if you believe you can have it and mm -hmm. so what happens is your faith becomes the the center of 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 prayer when jesus said it's not your faith it's your faith in god so it's not you're trying to gin up some tremendous faith. You can't do it anyway. It's recognizing that your faith is more mustard seed. And so it's not the largeness of your faith. It's the largeness of your God. And being aware of how we should pray and what we should pray for and the attitude that we should have in prayer, it all ties in because Jesus speaks concerning uh, saying to a mountain to be placed into the sea and all of that. And he speaks concerning illustrations related to that in, in other studies and other teachings. 
but he's pointing the men to not only have a, uh, a faith in a great God, but also to have a relationship, because prayer is relationship, have relationship with his, their fellow workers because, you know, they've been arguing about greatness in the kingdom, and yet Jesus is making it very clear that the things that will hinder you or your prayers is when you are unable to forgive somebody. So the context seems to indicate that because of the continuation of their different um, selfish, ambitious ways, ways of ministering, Jesus is trying to bring them to the basics. He's trying to get us to see that, look at if, if I have ought against a brother and, and yet I go and I start praying and saying, God help me and this and that, I'm really not doing the right thing. I need to be in fellowship with man because I'm in fellowship with man, it helps me to be in fellowship with God. But if I'm trying to say, well, I love God, but I'm, I'm hating my brother, well, John would have said, that's just not true. You're not telling the truth there because how can you love the invisible God and you can't get along with the visible brother? See, so it all ties together, John. And so prayer has a very social, if you will, a social aspect to it because it's a conversation with God, but it also reflects our relationship with others. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that this Sunday. Next, uh, and want to invite you guys to invite your friends and family to come join us Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. Uh, as Pastor David, you're going to be looking at this on prayer. I mean, I was able to look at a little bit, and and, uh, and I always say this, it's uh, it looks like it's going to be a good study. I like the points that Let's you're Let's hope getting. that it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, and then tonight we have our worship it's a CCA worship conference starts tonight, but tonight's a little different. Mm -hmm. It's not for those who paid for the conference. For tonight only, if you want to come worship with our church family, uh, Pastor David and Odin Fong will Odin. be there. Mm -hmm. You guys will be doing a Q&A. Yeah, Odin's going to lead in, wor lead in worship. We're going to have Q&A about worship, and then he'll close with an afterglow. And so, church family, it's a great opportunity to come out, invite your friends uh, to worship, to to have the afterglow afterwards and to listen to the q and I think that would be pretty cool. Can be. And so, well, Pastor, thank you so much. Church family, thank you. Also a reminder that we are still taking interest signups for Israel. You can actually sign up online through our calvaryccv.org or you can actually sign the interest list at the gazebo. The cost is going to be forty three eighty nine. All right. And so God bless you, church family, and we will see you soon.